Hey everybody, it's Atheist for the Cause here, and I've got an article review for you. This time it's about Trump, the Trump administration signals an end to campus star chambers by Asho. She does a lot of good stuff, um, so check her out if you're interested in this kind of thing. Um, for years, college campuses across the country have been conducting witch hunts to expel or punish men accused of sexual assault. Those may soon be coming to an end thanks to the Trump administration. One of the big reasons I voted for him is because we need to fix the universities, and Hillary Clinton certainly wasn't going to do it. Colleges and universities have conducted these witch hunts at the order of the U.S. Education Department's Office for Civil Rights, which during the Obama administration issued a Dear Colleague letter and additional guidance that all but assured students accused of sexual assault would not get a fair hearing. And now this isn't exactly, this doesn't have to be exactly partisan, whether you're on the left or right, but there is no denying that Trump and his specific administration has a huge role in this because the Dear Colleague letter was, uh, had a lot to do with uh, the Obama administration and um, and now this policy has a lot to do with the Trump administration we're talking about the actual executive branch now there are multiple branches entwined in this but the executive branch has a lot of power and in how they want to go after um, students and and how they want to go after schools for title nine violations um, main, mainly going after the schools. So uh, here is the Dear Colleague letter that they're talking about, issued on April 4th of 2011. Basically, it just goes through and there, um, it sets the stage in the beginning here for sexual assault and sexual violence and how those cases need to, you know, need to, um, something needs to be done about them because there are too too many going <clears throat> going unpunished basically and they say it's sex discrimination and that they set the stage that more women than men are victims and um, and I think that's kind of key in this because then you know when you set the stage that more women than men are victims and you're saying that this is sex discrimination, I, um, that's when you set the stage that you can defund based on Title IX. And universities, you know, could completely collapse if they get defunded by the federal government. So they are going to be, you know, extremely careful and go overboard with what the government wants. And it's created huge problems for civil rights. It's kind of amazing, huh, how when the Office for Civil Rights is the office that is creating the civil rights issue. Um, so then it goes into, you know, Title IX requirements related to sexual harassment and sexual violence, schools' obligations to respond to sexual harassment and sexual violence. It gets into... Um, procedural requirements pertaining to sexual harassment and sexual violence. Uh, here's a big one too. C. Adopt and publish grievance procedures providing for prompt and equitable resolution of student and employee sex discrimination complaints. So they're even um, pressuring the schools to be, you know, prompt and uh, there's no real definition in the well in the whole letter there are very they basically don't define anything so what does prompt mean you know this makes the school very nervous about you know if they do a prop take the time to do a proper pres uh, investigation then is that going to be prompt I mean sexual assault cases can take years in in the court system so and then there's a notice of so then they go through and a b and c and um m more extensively explain it um then there's a p prompt and equitable requirements uh and a bunch of bullet points there but i recommend i'm not going to go through this whole letter 
uh, right now. You you can go through it. I definitely uh, I definitely recommend reading this. There's uh, steps to prevent sexual harassment and sexual violence and correct its discriminatory effects on the complaint and complainant and others. Um, so as you can see, it's all about um, how to go after the accuser or the accused. Excuse me. This is all about propping up the accuser. There's nothing in or very little in here about um, due process rights or anything like that for the accused. Um, they don't even say that the accused uh, should have rights to legal representation or anything like that. And what we've seen is that a lot of times the accused don't have rights to legal representation. Um, so then there's a little summary here and let's read that part it says that the department is committed to ensuring that all students feel safe and have the opportunity to benefit fully from their schools education programs and activities as part of this commitment OCR provides technical assistance to assist recipients to achieving voluntary compliance with title nine yeah it's voluntary because if you don't do it you'll have no funding from the federal government and you'll collapse pretty much real voluntary if you need additional information about title 9 have questions regarding OCR's policies or seek technical assistance please contact them and uh, so that gives you some idea there are, oh there is one part I wanted to mention I don't know exactly where it is in here but basically they say that um, one of the key things is you can't or, or a school has to make sure that the her alleged harasser you know doesn't repeat and so that leads to you know kicking people off campus and things like that and what this letter has done um, I found this database there are a hundred and seventy five title IX complaints uh, th in the court system this is just um, just title nine so and this is what the um, what that letter has caused. There's another 131 in the queue, and this is just this database. So there's going to be a lot in here that um, you know. There's going to be a lot of complaints that aren't in this database. So, so you're talking like 300 com over 300 complaints in that database alone. Now, in here, they said these campuses, star chambers conducted behind closed doors and hidden by federal pr privacy laws, have resulted in an unknown number of expulsions. More than a hundred of these punished students have sued or are now suing their universities for violating their due process rights and discrimination, discriminating against them because of their sex. So um, she's saying more than a hundred, but it's actually like over three times that um, at a national association of college and university attorneys conference in Chicago this week acting assistant secretary of OCR Candace Jackson said the Trump administration would take a less confrontational approach to the way the department handles accusations that schools do not properly address sexual assault complaints now just think about this from a common sense standpoint like sure there can be some schools that are corrupted or whatever but for the most part um, you know are schools looking to let people uh, get away with sexual assault <laughs> um, I don't think so OCR has fallen into a pattern and practice of overreaching, of setting out to punish and embarrass institutions rather than appreciate their good faith and genuine desire to correct legitimate civil rights problems, Jackson told the crowd. And uh, that's the point I was just making. Um, appreciate their good faith. Most, This is an issue where most universities on their own will act in good faith. I mean very few people have tolerance for uh, sexual uh, violence or sexual um, crimes of any kind even in prison sexual crimes are you know the least accepted crimes even below murder 
So Jackson said, according to Inside Higher Ed, that the Obama administration had been playing gotcha with schools, treating every complaint as a finish ex expediting through which our field investigators have been told to keep searching until you find a violation rather than go where the evidence takes them. In addition, the Obama administration's OCR published lists of schools under investigation, which to the best of my knowledge, no other agency does to such an extent. The lists do not include any de details of the accusations, serving only to bully and embarrass schools into submission. I mean, this is, you know, on par with, you know, the sex offender registry, in my opinion. And, you know, there's no... What's the process for these schools to get on these lists, you know? It can be very damaging to a school, and they might be falsely accused of not trying to uh, go after sexual assaults. We'll stop rewriting laws at whim. Jackson said at the conference that the Trump administration's OCR, which is the Civil Rights Office, is committed to dis continuing the legally dubious practice of issuing sub-regulatory guidance that is then treated through enforcement as binding mandates, and said the 2011 Dear Colleague letter could be considered for reversal. Jackson said OCR may now go back and follow proper procedure to do what should have been done the first time around. Back in 2011, when the Obama administration issued its infamous Dear Colleague letter, OCR didn't follow proper procedure in crafting the document. Because it contained new regulations, it was supposed to go through a notice and comment period, which it did not. Therefore, critics such as Senator James Langford have argued the document should have never been enforced. And, uh, you know, that's a really interesting argument. To, to push this through, they didn't even follow proper procedure. So there wasn't a debate on this letter, and it just got pushed through and enforced and caused massive amounts of damage to civil rights by the Civil Rights Office. How ridiculous is that? Jackson would not, however, commit to removing the low standard of proof the Obama administration had required. The preponderance of evidence standard was forced onto schools for dubious reasons. The Obama administration claimed OCR was justified in using the standard because many schools already used it. <laughs> that is some logic right there. Some schools use it, so it's you know reasonable to force it on all schools even though that is not a legal justification. <laughs> the standard means schools. I'm laughing, but you know it's that like pathetic kind of laugh where you just kind of cringe and like when you cringe, you don't really know what to do, so you awkwardly laugh. That's why I'm laughing. It's not because I think this is funny. I just wanted to make that clear. I actually think this is pretty despicable, what the OCR did. The standard means schools just have to be 50.1 or 0.01 percent sure an accuser is telling the truth. Uh, given the in intense pressure from the media, activist groups, and the Obama administration, all of which claim we must always believe accusers, getting the 50.01 percent often took no more than unst unsubstantiated accusation. And I think that's a good point. You know. It's, it's a feminist policy to say that, you know, you should just believe the accuser. And uh, feminists had a huge role in the Obama administration. And so you saw that come out in this policy. And um, so when feminists say, feminism is for men too, here's an example of how feminism hurts men. And, you know, you have to take it issue by issue, but when you, when you broaden out to other issues, you see the, the same kind of thing over and over. Feminists are constantly trying to help men even at the collateral, or help women even at the collateral damage of men. And they rarely ever try, actually, pretty much never try to specifically help men. Um, their goal is always focused on the women. 
So feminism is not for men. It's specifically for women. And, you know, that's the goal anyways. But of course, feminism is an ideology that also hurts women because it, it, it seeks to control women. And if you have the wrong views, say you're a conservative woman or something like that, um, or you don't call yourself a feminist, they will viciously attack you and demand apologies like they did from uh, Kaylee Kuoko from uh, The Big Bang. She said she wasn't a feminist, and then they beat her into submission. How dare you not say you're a feminist until the point that she had to publicly apologize just to protect her career. So keep that in mind in regards to this policy. Even when a student was able to provide evidence eviscerating the accusation, it was ignored for fear the school would be investigated or receive bad publicity. Jackson did say the requirement for schools to use the uh, preponderance or another standard was actively under consideration. One attendee, attorney Scott Roberts, told Inside, um, Inside Higher Ed he liked, that, he, he liked what Jackson said. I appreciated her perspective that OCR will act as a neutral, impartial investigator, not as a prosecutor of presumed wrongdoing. What a change that would be, huh? This has been the previous administration's problem. Every time OCR concluded an investigation into a school, it found a Title IX violation. <laughs> Sometimes those violations conflicted with other violations or with what activists claimed to want. It appeared as though OCR was determined to find a violation no matter what. That is what you call a witch hunt. Keep in mind, like, the devastating impact of this. Kid, you know, kids are losing, they're getting kicked out of college and, and schools are you know, getting threatened with being defunded and, and just, you know, this is the future of these, of these kids. Even um, if they eventually get into another school or something, their career has been delayed so much and it could, could potentially cost them thousands of dollars, you know, tens of thousands of dollars with as much as school costs and Potentially, they might not be able to, to um, finish school if they can't afford, um, you know, to stay in school with, because they're going to get kicked out and they're going to have to start up somewhere else and they're not going to get credit for a lot of those classes, most likely, because they didn't finish the class. So just, you know, keep in mind how much damage this has really done to people who really a lot of these people are completely innocent and are completely law-abiding um, students otherwise. It's just they had the unfortunate circumstance of being accused of sexual assault in this environment. For years, colleges and universities have gotten away with discriminating against men by hiding behind Obama-era guidance documents. They, along with the federal government, say that sex assault falls under the anti-sex discrimination statute, Title IX, because women are the primary victims and have a right to education free from harassment. This should mean that the false accusations are a form of discrimination since men are the primary victim, meaning schools should take a fair and equitable approach to investigating claims. And that's a great point. Um, you know, let's go back to that letter. I'll show you the specific point. I kind of pointed it out before, but um, here is the paragraph where they're really setting up with, you know, they say that 6.1% of males were victims and one in five women are victims. So, of course, these two are based on bullshit uh, studies. But the whole point here is to say, uh, women are fa victims far more than than w men. So, but you can uh, flip that logic around and use it against uh, false accusations. Hmm. I wonder why the civil rights office didn't do that. Maybe because they had a sexist agenda. 
maybe because the Obama administration was largely influenced by feminists who have an ideology that is inherently misandrist. But the cultural, but the culture has, you know, and keep in mind, I am not anti-women's rights. There are women's rights issues, and they should be solved by women's rights advocates um, and society as a whole. But that does not mean we have to accept the ideology of feminism with the patriarchy and you know all their other bullshit theories. But the culture has been so muddied with activism that school administrators are actually taught to ignore the possibility of a false accusation because those are allegedly rare, although the data on them is often misrepresented. Essentially, colleges have treated every... You know what's funny is, is sexual harassment is actually rare. <laughs> you know, rape is not a common thing. So you could apply this to rape. Um, and be like, oh, we should just ignore that it's a possibility because it's so rare. I mean, how ridiculous is this? Essentially, colleges have treated every accusation as the truth and conducted sham investigations where accused students are forced to prove their innocence and to prove the assault didn't happen. I mean, this is, you know... From what the 1400s, they or a third world countries where you have to prove something didn't happen. Prove a negative is notoriously difficult, uh, leading to the possibility of hundreds of young men have having their lives unfairly ruined by colleges willing to throw their lives away to avoid a federal investigation and bad press. And now appears the Trump administration will attempt to end this injustice. Thank God. Granted, even if Obama-era overreach is overturned, it will take years, maybe even decades, for the damage to be undone. In January, a panel of college presidents said they would uphold the Obama-era guidance, even if Trump's OCR overturned it. One thing I'll say about this, though, is the colleges that do this, you um, students will at least have the ability to look into if they're school is one of these schools that have the obama era guidance and if they are avoid it and go to the schools that are going you know with the more trump's um civil rights office guidance so at least it'll give cho even if it's not completely solved right away it'll give choice to men around the country to protect themselves states such as california mississippi and others are working on bills to codify into law Obama's harmful policies. Now that's scary. Uh, Mississippi, that's kind of a surprising one because, you know, they're so Republican. Um, but it just shows you that uh, even the right can fall into this trap. And it's not necessarily completely partisan. Um, it will take... It, Oh, by the way, there are a lot of the, in this database, if you look, look at all these from California. I know California is a big state, but look at all those from California. Um, and the ones in queue, they don't have a state listed easily, but it, it will take a while before society remembers that due process is a constitutional right and necessary to seeking justice rather than impedium impediment impediment um and you know that's the thing when in doubt i know a lot of people don't like this but when in doubt you have to go with the accused because in order to um in order to you know have some reasonable justice you have to prove that someone actually did something and it's worse to find someone who was, you know, accused of wrongdoing when they're innocent than it, and, um, and find them guilty than it is to um, find someone innocent who actually was guilty. Because um, when you find someone guilty who is actually innocent, you create... Uh, a new victim 
Whereas if you find someone innocent who is guilty, you don't create a new victim. The victim was a victim, you know, no matter what. So, anyways, that's all I have for you. Um, check out Ash Show. She does a lot of good stuff, and she writes a lot of places. Says she's a senior contributor to The Federalist and a senior political col columnist for The New York Observer. She also contributes to a weekly segment on Enough Already podcast. She has previously worked for Watchdog.org and... I event, uh, originally saw her on stuff on Washington Examiner, and um, then she's on the Heritage Foundation. So she is, you know, she is actually a senior um, person, and she has a lot of experience writing on this issue specifically. She's concentrated on so. That's all I have for you guys now. Um, if you care about this type of thing, I'm going to have another video for you in a little bit. Uh, basically, it's another Title IX issue. That's ridiculous. So, um, basically, showing Title IX as being abused. So, check or uh, keep an eye out for that one. That it's going to be out in literally like less than an hour, probably. So, I'll talk to you guys later.